love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running I always take what I want and I always give it 100 Don't need a bank, no I'm funded Play the game like it's nothing I'm always thankful for something Don't take for granted, stay humble Now wake up! It's time to look at the enemy! Hi everyone, Ricky here from Behind the Bars TV In this episode I'm going to be talking about a whole life sentence and the person I'm talking about in this episode is Gary Vinter, who was serving a whole life sentence. There's actually three people in the video that I'm going to be speaking about that is uh, serving life sentences. Another one is Lee Newell, who is also serving a whole life sentence. So the whole life sentence is a sentence that is passed for the most severe crimes. And it was introduced in 1983 and some 100 people have been given the sentence. So since it was introduced, there was a hundred dished out, but I think there's only around about 70 still remaining serving the sentence, because some have either died or had their sentences reduced on appeal. But the sentence was kept for the most severe of crimes, people that have committed double murders, people that have been to prison, been released and went on to commit further murders, and paedophiles who have killed children. So the one who have Gary Vinter, who I'm talking about in this episode, I've actually been in prison with Gary. I was in Franklin with Gary and he was serving his whole life sentence then. But before I get to that, I would just like to ask the viewers, if you're not already subscribed, would you please help me channel grow by hitting that like and subscribe button? Because the bigger my channel grows, the bigger the podcast guests I'll be getting on. So 80% of my sorry, 80% of my viewers are actually not subscribed to my channel yet. So my, my channel is free of charge to subscribe to. So if you would please hit that subscribe button and help the channel grow. I'm nearly at 17,000 subscribers. I would love to get to the 20,000 mark by the end of the year. I know it's a big ask, but it is achievable with the way my views are going. And like I've mentioned, the majority of me subscribers, uh, I've said it again, the majority of me viewers are not subscribers, so just go ahead and hit that button. So I'll just get into the video now. So I'm talking about Gary Vinter. So Gary Vinter is from Middlesbrough, and he's an absolute beast of a man. And what I mean by that is he's about, I'm six foot four, and he made me look small. I think he was about six foot, he had six foot nine, so size of Tyson Fury. Um, and this man, is actually serving four life sentences. He's serving three life sentences with an additional IPP, which is also classed as a life sentence. So his first sentence was for the murder of Carl Eden in Middlesbrough, which was his work colleague. And this happened in 1995. So from what I've read up and what I've heard, Gary was working alongside Carl and one night when they were both working together Vinter actually turned on his colleague and stabbed him multiple times now i've read in a couple of different articles one said 13 times and another one said 37 times so i'm not sure the exact amount but whichever it is it was a horrific crime and he stabbed him multiple times so for that sentence he actually got a life sentence with a recommendation of 10 years and he actually got out after serving 10 years and not long after being released he started up a relationship with a woman and then he went on to murder her so gary got into a relationship with Anne white and i believe he got in a relationship with her whilst he was still serving his sentence and on his release he continued dating her and they went on to move in together and he actually married her um, but Gary got into a pub brawl and because of his license he was recalled back to prison and I think this is the first time I met Gary because I met Gary in Durham prison and then I went on to meet him in Franklin. so when I met him in Durham prison this is when he must have been on recall for the pub brawl and he got out in 2008 and went back to his girlfriend Anne White and the relationship wasn't going too well and they're actually split up and he smashed the house up a few days before the murder so he left the house they both split up and then one night he went back to the house to where she was and he strangled her and then and then went on to stab her police were called to the scene where Vinter was arrested and it took 
a lot of police officers to manhandle him and get him to the ground. And for that offence, Gary received a whole life order, which means he will never be released. So this is when he then went on to Frankland, which at the time I was served my sentence in Frankland. Um, and this is when I first met Gary. So my first opinion on Gary was looking at him, like I say, he was a big monster of a man, six foot nine. His victims didn't stand a chance against someone like him because he was, a, like I've said, mentioned, he was an absolute big bloke. He must have been about 20 stone. Um, so in Franklin, Gary was, he was quite quiet. He kept his cell to his cell. He didn't cause any, at first, he didn't seem to cause any hassle for anybody. But as he was in for a while and he started getting his feet under the table, because at first when he was serving his sentence, he was quiet, he was timid, and um, he didn't really give anybody any trouble. But after a while, since he'd been in and he got settled into his sentence, and he realised he was never getting out, and he didn't really have much, and he didn't have much money, Gary was the type of person that would do things for money or drugs, because Gary was a heavy drug user in prison. And to get his drugs, he used to do hits on people. And by hits, what I mean is if somebody wants another person or another inmate injured or took out, they would ask Gary to do it and they would pay him in drugs and Gary would then go on to assault the other inmates. But like I said at first, Gary was quite quiet, but then after a while, his real true colours started coming out and he wasn't a very nice person and he wasn't, he wasn't really liked or respected off many of the prisoners in there. Because after Franklin, there was an incident when he got moved on to different prisons and he, because he was getting into debts through drug debts and different things, and he then become a target himself, and he had been attacked a couple of times. So the next thing, he was walking around in Wakefield Prison. He'd actually converted to Islam, and I'd heard previous, I've heard since then that he's actually unconverted, if that's a word. What he does, he picks and chooses when he wants to be a Muslim. Because when he converts to Islam, he's then got the protection of the other Muslims in the high security prison, which is an absolute disgrace to the Islamic religion, because the majority of the Muslims in prison are peaceful Muslims, but you have got the likes of Vinda who converts to use it to his advantage. And this is what he's doing. When he's moving to different prisoners, when he's around non-Muslims, he's then and not a Muslim, and then when he's going to the prisons that's predominantly Muslim, he's converting to Islam to become one of the brothers and then be protected. So whilst in Wakefield Prison in 2011, Vinter went on to attack Roy Whiten with a brush handle sharpened up. So what happens in prison, obviously you, you get a plastic brush, toilet brush handles, where you get toilet brushes, sorry, but what they do, they snap the end off, and sharpen it down because the brush handles are actually really, really tough and they do not snap apart from the bottom bit. So he snapped the head off and carved it down into a spike. And everybody will know Roy Whiten, absolute disgusting animal that killed that poor little innocent schoolgirl, Sarah Payne. But this is one of the only decent things Vinda has actually done because the majority of you watching this I'll think it's justice being served on him. Not that I'm condoning violence whatsoever, because I'm not. But a lot of people will be thinking that it's justice served on this horrible monster. So Roy Whiten was repeatedly attacked by Vinda in the cell. Vinda has went in the cell after Roy Whiten, and he's beat him up and stabbed him. And he says the only reason he didn't kill him was because he'd run out of energy on beating him up and stomping on him. And for that attack, he got another life sentence. And the life sentence he got for that attack was IPP with a minimum of five years. So that was his third life sentence. He got a life sentence, a whole life sentence, and now the IPP. So Vinter then got moved to different prisons. So because in the Wakefield it's predominantly paedophiles, and obviously he must have been on the same wing as them, and that's always managed to attack Roy Whiten. 
So after that offence, Vinter was moved on to Long Lawton. Then, because of his history and because of his severity of his crimes, he gets kept getting moved around because of security reasons, and he ends up in HMP Woodhill in 2014, where he's put on the unit, and there was concerns over whether he was allowed to mix with other prisoners or not because of the attempted murder on Roy Whiten and there's been more after that where he's been doing hits on other prisoners so he's deemed a significant risk to other inmates and staff because he has actually threatened staff and when he whilst he was in Wood Hill he was on the unit and he wasn't getting much gym and he wanted to move to another prison so he could get more access to the gym and he did say to one of the prison officers if you don't get me moved watch what's going to happen to you tomorrow so what happened is the next day Vinter is put on the exercise yard with Lee Newell and Lee Newell is another person serving a whole life sentence so Lee Newell was also serving a whole life sentence because he received a life sentence in 1989 for the murder of his neighbour, 56-year-old Mary Neal. Then in February 2013, Lee Newell, along with another inmate, Gary Smith, murdered child killer Soban Anwar, who was serving a life sentence for killing a two -year, his, his own two-year-old child. So Newell, who was also serving this whole life sentence, was on the exercise yard with Vinter, hit him from behind, knocking him to the floor, stamping and kicking on him repeatedly, attempting to murder him. But because of his size, like I've mentioned previously, he didn't need weapons in this case. And what he's done is just continued his onslaught until officers came racing into the exercise yard to stop the assault. Vinter had fractured his skull, popped his eye, um, and Newell had actually lost his eye through this incident. He was in a coma with a fractured skull and Vinter was put into segregation where he was not allowed to associate with any of the prisoners now because of this assault. Um, he went to court and he admitted to the offence and he said he'd done it because he wanted to move to another prison with better facilities and for that he received another life sentence. So Newell actually went on to sue the prison and says that he should never have been put into contact with Vinter because of the threats he'd made and because of the previous assaults on other inmates. And he was actually awarded £85,000 in damages because he was left with a brain injury and lost the sight of his eye. He, lost his actu he lo actually lost his eye in the attack. And he was awarded £85,000 in damages, which... Is quite shocking really because I bet the victims or the victims families of their offences I've mentioned didn't receive this amount of money so for a prisoner who's been beaten up by another prisoner to get that sort of compensation is a bit extravagant. I'm not sure where Vinter is now but I know he's been put probably into another unit in another county of prison and he will be allowed minimal contact if any with the other prisoners because of these attempted murders and the threats on the other inmates. But one thing is for sure is that he will never be seen in the light of day again, which is rightly so because of the crimes that he's committed. He doesn't deserve to walk the streets, which I'm sure a lot of you will agree with. But Lee Newell, who I've mentioned in the video, I will be doing a separate video on him because like I've mentioned, I'm covering all 100 cases that have been given a whole life sentence even the ones that have died and the ones that have won the appeals. So keep an eye out and I will be doing more. But if you are liking the content, like I mentioned at the beginning, people, please like and subscribe. But I hope everyone is fit and well. Take care.